has won the race. No question about that. There's Anthony Friedman and Michael Friedman down there. And let's not forget, it is Lee Friedman, but it's also FBI, Friedman Brothers Incorporated, who put a tremendous amount of work into their horses, and they are the most feared quartet in racing. David Haynes' third win as an owner in the Oak Stakes, and he'll get a great deal of satisfaction out of this because this horse is by Kingston Rule, the horse with which he won the Melbourne Cup here at Flemington in 1990. Damien Oliver is just making his way through the crush, and he'll head into the scales, and Mr Des Gleeson will check the weight on Damien and the other five riders from first down to sixth, and then Damien will be speaking with Mark Aston, and I'm sure he'll be pretty happy about that win in what has been a memorable Oak Stakes in front of a crowd which I'm sure is over 70,000. It's going to be a record crowd, no question about that. Gold, red stripe sleeves, red cap. Amongst the most famous colours in racing, and here is Damien Oliver now to have a chat to Mark Aston after winning the Crown Oaks of 97. Yeah, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, Damien, you're hardly sweating. Uh, it was a bit easy, wasn't it? I feel a bit guilty, but um, she's a class filly and it uh, makes my job a bit easier when, when they race like that. Wonderful ride. Uh, in trotting terms, one out and one back. Yeah, it's sort of the ideal place to be and uh, coming to the turn, she really travelled up sweetly for me and you know, at the 300, I thought it's time we better get going and when I asked her the question, she really poured it on. Leaving the straight the first time, were you confident then? I know that's a long way, uh, long way out. Well, actually, um, Darren Beaven was behind the leader and his horse was pulling too hard, so he had to come out and let his filly stride. And then um, I quickly tried to get back in, one off the fence before someone else got there and she was able to do it and go back to sleep and it's just a good sign of a stayer when they can do that. Who would you compare her with that you'd ridden before? Well, Northwood Plume, we won the, I won the Oaks on a few years ago. She's probably a better stayer than Northwood Plume and um, oh, she's got a bright future for sure. And I know that you mentioned to Letsy uh, on Saturday, I think it was, that uh, she may well be a Cups chance uh, next year. Do you still uh, have those same thoughts? Yeah, she could well be. You know, everything going well and she matures well. I definitely think you'll see her back here for the Cups next year. Mate, you've been doing a bit of uh, celebrating and I've just heard correct weight, so that's even good news. Great, thanks mate. Good on you, Damien. Damien Oliver there, the uh, winner of Kensington uh, Palace on Kensington. Palace in the Crown Oaks, Pete. Uh, fantastic ride and a great win. It was a brilliant ride, Mark, and there's no need to feel guilty when you ride them perfectly. 10 out of 10 for Damien Oliver. The Whitman's correct weight signal is there, so we can check the dividends after the running of race number five on the card. Kensington Palace has paid $2.50 and $1.40. Only a lady second, $3.20. $1.90 for Kilmore Key. The Trifecta paid $116.20. The Quinella, $15.50. And the Race to Race Double has paid $21.80. Weight is right after the running of the Crown Oaks of 1997. D. Oliver and D. L. Friedman, a pretty hard combination to beat. And the connections have something to celebrate. In just a couple of moments' time, they'll be presented with the Crown Oaks trophy. And we'll see that when we return to Flemington on the other side of this break. Certainly. Well, they arrive here for Oaks Day fairly happy, although those two ladies obviously didn't back a winner. They just get happier and happier as the day progresses amongst a huge crowd here at Flemington for the Oaks. And there is a pretty special filly in Kensington Palace. They're ready for the presentations. Here's Rob Gaynor. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Premier of Victoria, his wife, Mrs. Felicity Kennett, about to uh, sash the winner of the Oaks, the Crown Oaks, for 1997. And while Mrs. Kennett is about to do that, may I introduce to you the chairman of the VRC, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David J. Burke, CBA. <laughs> Members of the committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Victoria Racing Club, I'd like to thank Crown for their sponsorship of this great race, and also Crown for the various other sponsorships that they do for the Victoria Racing Club. As you know, Lloyd Williams was a member of the committee and he gave us great service. This was a great race. We thank the crowd for the wonderful support they've given here today. We've had a wonderful uh, cup carnival and today looks like being better than ever. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Jamie Bartels, Executive General Manager, Marketing, Crown. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bartels. Thank you, Chairman. On behalf of Crown, Melbourne's world of entertainment, we are delighted today to be sponsoring this magnificent race in this, our fifth year of association with the VRC. Today we've witnessed a magnificent race won by a top-class filly in Kensington Palace, ridden to perfection by jockey Damien Oliver and trained to the minute by Lee Friedman. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as I present the winning trophy to the fantastic owners of Kensington Palace, Mr David Haynes and his wife Helen. Thank you. Oh, to be accepted by Cathy Haynes. Well Ladies and gentlemen, we are so very delighted to be standing up here accepting the trophy from Jamie. With thanks to Crown Casino, where we've all had a lot of fun, and very mainly to the wonderful Friedman family and Damien Oliver, who's just been the most superb jo jockey through the carnival and certainly on our lovely filly. Um, I'd also like to thank Michael Collison and our team at Kingston Park for doing such a great job with our horses. Uh, we, we couldn't have asked for more in such a great win for today. Our filly is, is a homebred and uh, we wish Kingston Rule further luck with the races, but uh, thank you everything. It's, it's been a great day and I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. Bye. Cathy, congratulations, and to uh, your mum and dad, a lovely filly, and uh, Jamie, if I could ask you also, would you present that trophy to the winning trainer in Lee Freed, but Lee, you can have that microphone there if you like. Congratulations, <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jamie Bartels, representing Crown uh, World of Entertainment. Um, we've certainly entertained by that, that was fantastic. Uh, Mr. David Burke, Chairman of the VRC, and members of the committee, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, great thrill to win the Oaks again. Uh, this filly's always promised so much, and uh, she was firmly on course for the race for some months now, so it's been a, a case of great anticipation, but she did the job beautifully today. I'd like to thank Damien for a great ride, and Robin, uh, who straps her, and all the people at the stables who do such a great job, and, and for David and Helen, and Kathy Haynes for sending me the filly. At uh, one stage, I believe she may have been going up the bush, but uh, I think she's a bit better than the bush horse. Thank you. And Jamie, also, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, presenting that to uh, Damien Oliver. He leaves us for a little bit of a holiday, but uh, Damien, you've certainly left on a high. Congratulations. Thanks, well done. committee ladies and gentlemen um, first of all I, I've got to thank David and Kathy Haynes for giving me the opportunity to ride such a great filly I think she's got a, a great future um, the Friedman boys for doing a, a wonderful job turning her out and all their staff who, um, who couldn't be here today but put in a lot of time um, to crown a world of entertainment the only place to go and celebrate after a day at the races um, and um, I'd also like to thank all the punters out there for giving me such a wonderful reception coming back in thank you <laughs> Damien Oliver, Lee Friedman and Cathy Hayes making the speeches all pretty pleased with the performance of Kensington Palace, not surprisingly. 2 50 and 140 recapping the dividends on the Crown Oaks. $3.20 for only a lady, $1.90 for Kilmore Key. The trifecta, $116.20, wasn't that hard to have. The Quinella, $15.50. And the race to race double has paid $21.80 on race five. Principal event on the third day of the carnival. That paves the way for the Cadbury Roses stakes and that is due at 325 and from the sixth event on the card the scratching is number 15 and that is opaque we're left with a field of 16 to run and as i said 325 is the starting time and i thought dandelar was going to be pretty hard to beat here jim but you might have come up with one of value well i think you're right i think dandelar is very hard to beat but the one that i do like though peter is number seven here scandinavia very good filly boat attendant back in february then resumed with a very good run first up to win at kite and it was in open company and i thought it was an excellent win i, th I thought she had a very good strong each way chance here second dandelar number one and for third i put in number eight techniques well as you can see Dandelar has come up exceptionally short in fact it's odds on I don't think uh, we've had too many odds on favorites over the carnival so far I can't really recall that we've had one yet and Dandelar at $1.90 and $1.20 very impressive up the straight the other day when it defeated Special Dane and the thing I liked about that race Jen was not only did it beat Special Dane but they finished eight lengths in front of the others that's right and you just can't knock her form at all 
are the tote figures. And as we take a look at the remaining ones there, Tim Gossage is looking over things down in the betting ring. What about the result of the Oaks, Timothy? Wasn't a great result, in fact. Although Kensington Palace did get the blows very, very late, Peter, but it still wasn't a great result for bookmakers. In this, Dan Talar, well, you've said it's odds on in the tote. It's not in the ring. You can get black numbers here down in the bookmakers' ring. One that's very interesting is a spinner. It's paying $16 on the tote. 10 points shorter in the ring and Jen's tip Scandinavia likewise. Big odds on the tote, much, much shorter in the ring. Okay, thanks to Tim Gossage. Dantelar, the favourite here for race number six on the card. And as we go back to Tim Webster, Tim, the class filly generally wins the Oaks in 1997 has certainly been no exception. Yes, Peter, and she did it really breathtakingly easily, didn't she? And as we take a break, you know, winning a feature race during Melbourne Cup week is special no matter who you are. And as we go to that break, here's why. Flemington 1997, everything looking absolutely superb from the grandstand through to the members' lawn and onto the track. Just a great day. Typical November day too, by the way. Very hot it was in the morning and it's become a little cloudy and they're threatening a thunderstorm. That won't worry anybody. I think she's probably had several glasses of something long and cool with lots of ice, I would think. Sandra Sully in our marquee. Tim, you're giving my secrets away. You know that. You must stop. <laughs> now look, I've managed to find the one and only Matthew White from Sports Tonight who's uh, in Melbourne for the weekend. You are way in front. I don't know about way in front, but I'm in front. I'm in front today, which is good news because I was in, I was behind on Saturday and a long way back from last year. So I'm, I'm I'm clawing my way back. It's a big week for Sports Tonight as well. As it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a huge week for Sports Tonight. Um, we're at uh, the Concert Hall. We've been there since Friday, right in Melbourne. It's a beautiful shot, and we just can't waste it. And uh, Billy Woods is in the chair for this week. I was in the chair on the weekend, so we're giving Tim Webster a little bit of a break because <laughs> I think he deserves it. But, uh, yeah, we're having a great, uh, great reaction, great reception to the people that we've been talking to. Excellent. Well, Tim, I know it's back to you, but before we go, um, I'll just be trying to... Uh, elicit his tips because while he's playing down the fact that he is way in front he is in front let me tell you and I'm just going to steal his race book and I might pop up and see you and give you a couple of his tips they seem to be winning Sandra that's a very fine idea tell him to keep nice won't you keep nice apparently oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Matthew White there joining us now another chance for viewers right around Australia to win a fabulous beautiful luxury weekend for two courtesy of the new casino in Sydney called Star City here's Angela Bishop with the details an exciting thing is happening in Sydney. I'm in the Lyric Theatre, just one part of the most amazing entertainment destination in Australia. Called Star City, it's set to open on November 26, and you could be here in Sydney to celebrate Star City's first weekend. Star City is giving away the ultimate prize. It includes a trip for two people to Star City to see Tom Jones live in concert on the 28th of November. You and a partner will be flying to Sydney business class and taken to Star City. You'll stay in the executive suite for two nights and enjoy dinner at Star City's exclusive restaurant Astral and just to make your stay even more memorable you'll have two thousand dollars in cash to spend there are also four weekends to be won at Star City and tickets to see Dean Perry Steel City all you need to do is call 1902 555612 and answer this simple question what's the name of Australia's most exciting entertainment destination it certainly is, and uh, we thank Star City, the new uh, casino in Sydney, for providing that with us uh, for us. Now, Sports Tonight's where you'll find the winner on Monday, the 10th of November. You can call for the rest of today, and then again on Saturday. Stakes Day, all the best of luck to you, because it's a great prize. Now, Lynn Talbot, can I find you? Where would you be? I'm down here on Pray the members' tell. lawn having an absolutely wonderful time. And, uh, you know, basketballers, they do run off on you, don't they? I had an esky here to stand up on and interview them. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and no basketballers. And there was no uh, shortage of people volunteering their eskies because there are a few here at this stage of the day. I hey, think Lynn. a lot of them are empty. Yeah. Nice ankles. <laughs> Thanks, lovely. <Lottie. laughs> <laughs> but look, I can find them uh, at this point. Uh, I think they're coming towards us, so we'll, we'll come back to the basketballers very soon. 
Well, you know, they were the Melbourne Tigers you were about to interview, weren't they? So, uh... They had a great win, and they're obviously yeah. celebrating very hard. Uh, they're having a big week, I would dare say, but the jazz bands are up and running. We'll wait uh, for you to find the Melbourne Tigers for us. They shouldn't be hard to spot, Lynn, by the way. Well, that's why I'm standing up here as well, because uh, yeah. I should be able to spot them. I saw a head bobbing around. I think it was uh, Mark Bradkey, but um, I think he might have got left in the uh, yeah, champagne bar. <laughs> You find them, we'll go racing instead. Peter Donegan, the Cadbury's Roses Stakes. Now there's a race that's been around for an awfully long time and it's about to happen. Has been around for a while, Tim. I actually saw a couple of blokes dribbling over there, but I don't think they were basketballs. <laughs> um, let's go on to the uh, Cadbury Roses Stakes and the uh, scratching is number 15, Opaque. So we've got 16 to run and Dandelard does look the one to beat here, Jen. Look, her form is so consistent, Peter, isn't it? And it's hard to knock her at all. She's come up very short odds on the tote, but I do think she's going to be extremely hard to beat here. Yeah, she is a lovely grey filly and will be ridden by Jim Cassidy, of course, for Paul Perry, who's had a magnificent carnival so far. And Jimmy rode it beautifully the other day, Jen, didn't he? He got some cover and then when the race was there to be presented to her at the 300 metre mark, he just let go. And she's been lucky with the barrier because she drew two the other day and she's drawn one today. Well, that's true. And uh, she did get the box seat there. Everything went right, but she was far too good. Well, if you can get the favourite beaten, you're going to get some value. So let's have a look at the others. It's a giggle. Brett Preble, the rider for John Maher. Well, she was a very good filly in the autumn and she's had a couple of runs uh, down the straight as well and uh, for a couple of wins. So really, you can't disregard her as well. She's had that one run, so she might have needed that just for some fitness and I wouldn't be surprised to see her run a better race here. <laughs> Snapshots battled on nicely behind Cornwall Queen during the Caulfield Carnival and Brent Thompson as the rider. Yes, yeah, so she joined in on the turn on that occasion and Cornwall Queen was just too good for her. Her 1200 metre record is very, very good, so I've left her there with some chance in the race. All right, well there's number three, except we're having a look at her with Darren Gauchy aboard and the one that we were talking about is number four and that is Snapshots with Brent Thompson in the saddle. So we'll see if we can take a look at her. Oh, she's notice, not arrived yeah, yet. Brent's still in the mounting yard there, so we'll catch up with her when she gets here. Number seven is Scandinavia. Stephen King is the rider for John Sadler, one of the most popular blokes in racing. And he's got a good chance of uh, getting the money here, Johnny Sadler. Yes, I do like this filly, that's for sure, Peter, because, uh, as I said before, back in uh, February, I think it was, she did bow attendance, so she's had some leg problems, but I believe she's fine now. And uh, she resumed in that open sprint down at Kite, and I do think that was a very, very good performance. She was tackled and she fought on, so very hard to beat here. The Max Lee stable has already had a winner today earlier in the afternoon and uh, Techniques is their one here with Larry Cassidy aboard. Yes, um, at Caulfield uh, she, she was a bit one paced on that occasion. She was tightened on the line. She managed to finish fourth behind Dantela and prior to that her form had been quite consistent so she's there with some chance. Number nine is Cairns Love and the rider here is Damien Oliver. Lee Friedman is the trainer. Now this is pronounced Cairns Love. Uh, that means 15 love in French. Yes, uh, I'm glad you know that Peter. <laughs> anyway, um, she was given a good ride, I thought, and every chance at Caulfield behind Dantela. And meets Dantela worse off at the weights here, so I'm, I could only give her a place chance in this. And there's a very good reason I know that too, Jen. Someone told me. <laughs> Number 13, Espina, Greg Hall, another one of Lee Friedman's. Another one that couldn't really match it with Dantela at her last start at Caulfield there. Uh, hard to see her beating her at the weights as well. Fanciful lady number 14, Danny Nikolic for Peter Hayes, who's lightly roast, only the three starts. Yeah, she finished quite close up at her first up run. Uh, Battled on well there under a big weight. She carried 56 and a half. Uh, the 55 here will probably suit her a bit better. It wouldn't shock me if she ran a bit of a race. And I'm sure we can have a look now at number four, and that is Snapshot's Coming into the yard, she is a bit of a late arrival, but there she is, Brent Thompson, waiting patiently for her $12.50 on the tote. What about the selections, Jen? Well, the selections, I'm going with number seven here, the lightly raced Scandinavia, to win from number one, Dantelara, number eight, Techniques. And I think the favour win, Dantelara, number one, in the Cadbury Roses Stakes, 3.25, the scheduled starting time, a magnificent view from Flemington up above. We'll be back with the sixth event in a moment. Stakes 1200 metres and a pretty big field here, so barrier position is quite important. Dantela having drawn barrier number one at a big advantage, it's even money on the tape. Have they backed anything to beat it? Well, as we look at the tape figures, let's also find out what's happening from Tim Gossage in the betting ring. Peter, they haven't backed anything to beat Dantela. They let the punters on and they came in their numbers, and it's very similar price as it is on the tote as it is in the ring. No, the punters down here believe Dantela is over the line. 
Well, let's get the thoughts of Roy Higgins and see what he thought of the appearance of Dan Hilar, the favourite, prior to the running of the Cadbury Roses Stakes, Roy. Pete, you can't, you certainly can't fault her out of the age. She's not a big filly. This is the only question mark against her. She's very much on the small side, does have a very big heart. She does have the 57 on her back. She's well weighted against her opposition, but then again, she's got to carry this uh, 57 and a half. The outside of the track from barrier one is causing a bit of concern. It is cutting up out near the fence. Yeah. They are a little bit concerned about that, but as a racehorse, she does have a bit on the opposition. Of the others here, a bit of value there. One I did like, a Dane, uh, Dane Hill filly called Espina, number 13, one of Lloyd uh, um, Lloyd Bra Williams and uh, and Lee Friedman's there. Very nice filly. Techniques, number eight. This filly does have a win over Dan Teller in Sydney. She looked excellent going out. And number seven, Scandinavia, another very nice filly with good credentials. I went with Dan Teller, but of the others, I went for a bit of value in 13, Espina, eight Techniques, and seven, Scandinavia. The thoughts of Roy Higgins on the Cadbury Rose Stakes race six before they move up. Brent Thompson is the rider for Snapshots, who was a late arrival in the mounting yard, but Brent was on time when we caught up with him. Good run last start. She did, she ran very well uh, behind Cornwall, Cornwall Queen. Uh, but she's been in it for a couple of ra races and didn't take a place due to uh, barriers and whatever. But uh, yeah, she's in good form, probably the, the top weight. It's, uh, very smart, and if uh, it's maintained the form, is obviously the one to beat. You're drawn pretty well in three. Yeah, well, I'm drawn with, you know, the, the, the favoured runners in the race. Yeah. Mark Oston catching up there with Brent Thompson and Dan Tillard drawn barrier one here, so hard up on the rail for this dash down the straight 1,200 metre course in case you're just joining us. There is a record crowd here at Flemington and we'll have the official figure later but I'm certain it's over 70,000. There's Dan Delar and Jimmy Cassidy going into the gates now and if you missed it, the favourite won the Oaks. Kensington Palace started 7-4 to favourite and defeated only a lady at 10-1 to and Kilmore Key at 4-1. to Victory for the Friedman Stable for the second time in the Oaks Stakes and Damien Oliver toasting success. And what a triumph it was for the Haynes family. Gary Willits mentioned them. They bred the sire, Kingston Rule Gary, and they bred the mayor, Raganza. And uh, I think that adds impetus to what is obviously a very special win for the family. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that's their third Oaks win. Uh, DRC Oaks win and also an Australasian Oaks win. And I'm not sure if Low and Star might have won an AJC Oaks for them. But uh, they've put a lot of money into the game and they're great people to ride for. But uh, this race here, gee, Dan Delar, it's hard to go past her. Danny, uh, it was mentioned to me that Ray Hutchins uh, hasn't been the best. We'd like to see Ray at Cherry O. He trained Gala Supreme. When was that, Dan? 73 Melbourne Cup. 73 Melbourne Cup. So there you are, Ray, if you're listening. I hope you're watching the 10 coverage of this. And hope you're feeling better. Hope you're back a winner. We're moving up pretty well. Take Manhattan coming up, except away. So to empower. So only a few to move up. Dan Talar currently $2.10 is the favourite. It's interesting, Dan. Rosa Kingston, I thought she was one of the best horses. I threw a leg over and she won the AJC Derby and the next morning uh, we had the horses at Rose Hill and a chap come round on a motorbike, put the motorbike over and ran straight into her and uh, we got her back but she was never quite as good. I, I think I won uh, a couple of races on her and then uh, Mr Haynes sent her to start and of course uh, made her in Kingston Hall was one of the maidens. But I, I really don't know how good she was. She was like driving a motor car. Except about to go into the line, Empower about to come up. The staying fillies this year, Gary, they look something special. special. I think we can follow the form very seriously, particularly in the longer staying races, right. even for this time next year. Oh, definitely. You know, they all ran home well, a lot of those horses. Now, Empower joins up and they're set to go. Dandala, the favourite, drawn from barrier number one. Of movement in the gates, but they are all locked away. Oh, Barry 11, there's a big problem there. Oh, awful trouble. And hopefully, this horse, now this is this horse will come out for sure. Down after you like. Yeah, it's just in an awful position there, isn't it? Yeah, there's no way they'll let this one run. Okay, Amber Gaze, is it? Yep, it is Amber Gaze, number five. So, oh, she was. Uh, now she has to go under the inspection of the vet, but she looks badly stirred up by that. Yeah. It's, um, that's what I say, uh, you can't stress and what a great job uh, the barrier tenants do for you to save you in these situations. Dan, I've often, uh, you can see Darren's saddle there, it's been quite crushed. 
And like if you're in between it, well, that's what happens here a couple of times. I've got my fingers broken. He's hurt his shoulder. He's hurt his shoulder. Well, that's uh, it's lucky now. We've, well, he's been a bit of pain there. Hope he hasn't broken his collarbone the way he's going down there, because that's what happens when you break your collarbone, you get dragged down. Well, you'd be a master of knowing all about that, wouldn't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, I do. Yes, Dr. Willits. But, uh, no, it's, um, what I say, this, uh, lucky they've got all that new padding on these new stalls, because the old stalls didn't quite have it. Well, Cairns Lovers out of the gates. You can see one of the attendants there uh, has hit out of the gates as well. He looks like he's been stomped on. Now, have a look. Yeah, There's right Amber Gaze there. going up, uh, and now... Darren Beedman out the back there. Yeah, luckily he's gone and been thrown right clear. Uh. Oh, he was very, very fortunate. Yeah. It could have been a heck of a lot worse, That's right? Because one day I went over like that down and my feet got caught in the eyes, and luckily one of the barrier teams was that quick. He actually caught me and held me up, and the uh, horse was on top of me like I could have broken my legs or anything. And, uh, and that's, that's Darren going into the ambulance. They'll, they'll have a look at him. It's not looking good for Amber Gaze. And I noticed Cairns Love out of the gates there, number nine. She was in the stall next door to Amber Gaze and could well have got a kick yes. from that filly when she was up in the air, and they've taken Fanciful Lady out as well. But, but I think that's except out there that Darren Gatchy's doing something to standing by the clerk of the course there. Here's Jimmy Cassidy. He's just been resting a little bit to keep the weight off. Uh, now, the saddles come off Cairns Love here too. Right. That's number nine. The saddles come off, which is a sign that she's not going to run. Well, and you would have your doubts about Amber Gaze as well, wouldn't you? She looks yeah. as if she may have got kicked by the other horse, well, Cairns Love. Yeah, well, when that uh, Amber Gaze has gone over backwards, it's most of its legs have gone under the stalls and... And here goes the siren, and it's quite possible these two are both going to come out, Amber Gaze and, uh, and Cairns Love, but we will have it officially in a moment. You notice number five there, Dan, the saddle, how it's been crumpled up. Well, that could have easily been Darren Beedman's leg. Now, Amber Gaze is about a 25 to 1 shot, and Cairns Love, which did have a bit of support, was about a 15 to 1 chance. Now, all the other horses are locked away, and they're both scratched. Cairns Love is out. Likewise, Amber Gaze, both late scratchings. And the starter goes to his rostrum now, and they're all set to go. Drama already before the start of the sixth. The Cadbury Roses stakes. And once again, they are ready to run. And a call of hang on there from one of the jockeys. And they look to be OK. And they are. They're racing now. Dandelar got out OK. Uh, snapshots was a little bit tardy away. And they're going to split up here. Most of them are going to come down the flat side of the track. Empower, except Take Manhattan. My Little Lucy was up there. Likewise was It's a Giggle. And Espina was also down there with Fanciful Lady in Scandinavia. Whereas down the grandstand side, Dandelar, the leader from Snapshots and Royal Agenda. Lunar Flight was just behind those horses as they come down towards the 700 metre mark now. And down the grandstand side, it's Dandelar, about three or four away in from the rails, leading from snapshots. Uh, Royal Agenda's up into about third position, and just behind those was Lunar Flight. Down on the flat side, except in front from Take Manhattan, it's a giggle. Scandinavia running on strongly, and then Empower ridden along from Fanciful Lady. Espina and My Little Lucy checked off heels. Down the grandstand side, Dandelar led. Techniques is chasing it hard. On the flat side, it's Scandinavia going up to tackle, except but Dandelar's burst away. Dandelar in front. On the flat side, it's except in Scandinavia, but Dandelar in front. Crom on the inside, except Dandelar, the leader, though, getting close to the line, and Dandelar's going to win again. Dandelar first beat, except in third Scandinavia, then Techniques, Empower, Fanciful Lady, Snapshot.